What's up guys, it's Cliff here. We're gonna talk about the Nikon F5 today. Um, basically, it's Nikon's flagship film camera from 1996, um, and basically has all of the features of a modern um, DSLR camera inside of a film camera. Obviously, it wasn't the case when this camera came out. It was kind of quite the opposite. So we're gonna go through a few of the specs of this camera um, and then just kind of look at basic operation and stuff like that. So this camera has five AF points, um, shoots at eight frames a second, um, has lock-on tracking um, for those bursts as well, um, and then supports all of Nikon's glass, basically, um, except for their newest, like, AFP um, lenses. Something that's cool about this camera um, is the 3D color matrix metering. Um, so basically there's a color filter over the metering system um, and then does some maths on the inside to make sure that your exposure is, like, spot on. And as someone who shoots an aperture priority, um, in most cases, um, it's pretty darn accurate. So the ergonomics of this camera is really awesome. Um, it fits in the hand really well. Um, and honestly, it's a brick. It's built like a tank, um, but it's not super heavy. Um, part of that comes from um, the ability to use rechargeable lithium-ion batteries um, within the body. Um, so you can purchase these from Amazon or what have you, um, but it seems to reduce the weight a lot, and you can just recharge them once they're dead. That being said, I've been using this camera on and off for the past eight months, um, and it still shows a full charge. So we're just gonna start at the top here. Um, so you have your film winder and then drive select on this side. Obviously you're on, off, and a shutter. Um, exposure compensation, um, your mode button. Um, so basically you press that and the dial back here um, and then it will change through aperture, shutter, priority, manual, um, and so forth. Underneath this back plate here, um, we have all of your ISO, um, flash settings, um, and other stuff. Basically, for bracketing and custom stuff, I think this, this camera supports uh, 24 custom modes, um, but honestly kind of going through the like menu tree style commands, um, you don't really need to in a lot of cases um, for doing kind of like your basic shooting. Um, and then you have your metering modes up here, um, so you can switch from um, spot metering and metering across the entire frame, so that's your matrix metering. So now we're going to take a look at loading the film. Um, so of course there's this little lever here that you can pop open. I'm going to try and do this so you guys can see. Um, I've got a canister here of super old Fuji Color 200 um, that we're going to waste here. So it's harder to do backwards here, obviously, but you slide it in like so, pull your film out. And basically you just want enough to go across the gears here, close it up, press your winder down, and take a frame. So you can see that it's loaded now. And then of course, we'll just do a little demonstration of that awesome burst fire, and we're gonna run through an entire roll. That's a total of 25 frames. We're at the end here. Um, so of course, the rewind procedure is flipping this guy up, pressing the button that's under this flap, um, and then we're just going to press this button here, 
and then you can see that it's rewound um, and then your frame counter is at empty again. All right, we're gonna throw on a lens um, and just kind of take a look at focus and such. So here we have the 85 millimeter 1.4 D from Nikon. You have your focus control up here, manual, single, and continuous. So I can go around and it will autofocus. Um, so of course, normally I shoot in continuous autofocus um, that usually does pretty well for me um, on rare cases where I'm doing some kind of like specialized portrait um, or thing on a tripod, then sometimes I'll use single or manual. Um, but what's cool about this too is that you can also use all of your modern flash equipment. So here we have a Godox flash as well as their flash trigger, um, the X2T model for Nikon, um, but I also don't see why you wouldn't be able to use any other um, model like their X-Pro. Um, so basically you'll just slide it on like any other camera here. You'll go into the flash button on the back, use your command dial to where it says do like a rear curtain sync, that's fine. And then we'll take a frame and then it'll pop like that. So if you kind of have an equivalent setup, um, either on the Nikon side or any full frame thing, um, just kind of match up your ISO, take an exposure, make sure it's right with the flash, and then pop this on, um, depending on what film stock you, you're using. Um, just because uh, this doesn't support TTL, of course, um, so you won't kind of have any automatic flash stuff going on. I purchased my F5 used um, for just under $400, and I've seen examples out there for $350 to $500, and they all kind of sit in that range there. Um, so honestly, if you're looking for kind of like a professional film camera that has all of the uh, creature comforts of a modern camera, like the F5 is the way to go. Um, and you don't want to spend, you know, as much as the F6s, which is, you know, like closer to three grand. And unfortunately, they just discontinued that camera as well, uh, because you could still buy it new. All right, so that's a brief overview of the F5. Um, now we're gonna take a look at some photos um, that I've taken with this camera throughout the past eight, eight or 10 months um, with the lenses on this table, just so you can kind of get a, an idea of the quality that you might expect from this camera. All right, cool. So we're just gonna go through a few photos that I've taken with the F5 um, over the past months. Um, kind of go through um, the film stock, the lenses that I've shot them with, um, and then just kind of like the overall quality of the photo as well. All right, cool. So now we're just looking at Lightroom here. Um, this is the collection that I've made uh, through kind of some of the <laughs> better film photos I've taken. Um, so for starters, we'll just take a look at this one here. Um, the first four were taken at a Carson Coffee event in November of last year. Um, so just a snapshot here um, of this uh, old Toyota pickup truck. Um, and all of these, we'll just take a look at the second one here. Uh, so this is an old Z car, Nissan or Datsun, however you want to call it. All taken with the Tamron 24-70 G2 lens, so that's like a contemporary, like modern lens. Um, and you can just see that we're like super sharp here. Um, yeah, and I will mention that all these photos were developed and scanned by Dodd Camera of Cincinnati. Um, I think they actually have their film lab up in their Cleveland office, um, but that's just kind of how it is. Um, these first few photos were on Portra 400, um, so you can see the nice fall colors um, in the reflection of the hood here. 
So in this photo, you can kind of see a little bit more of the color rendition and the sharpness. I think this is probably taken around like uh, F3 and a half, F4, if I had to guess. Um, so overall, super sharp here. Um, this next set was taken on the Roebling Bridge in Cincinnati um, with the same same lens, that 24 to 70. Um, so of course you have your focal point down here and then just a fall off. Um, this is actually left over from an event that I worked on, um, Blink Cincinnati, which is like kind of like an art installation. So they basically lit up the entire city um, and we'll go through some photos I took um, in that event as well. All right, this next set is going to be portraits, and the first two are higher resolution TIFF scans. Um, just kind of see how the higher resolution would work out in portraiture. Um, so we'll just take a look at this one here. So this is on the F5, 85 millimeter, 1.4 D lens on. Let's see what film stock was I using. I was using Kodak XT400. Um, of course, with the black and white, you'll get a little bit more pronounced film grain, but that's like just a look. It's cool. All right. This next one was shot on Kodak Ektar 100, um, and this one took a little bit more fiddling in the post-processing side. So that's cool about modern film photography is once you get a higher resolution scan, you can go back into Photoshop or Lightroom and play around with it a little bit. So what we have here on the left-hand side is the original scan. So way more vibrant colors, more saturated, um, higher contrast. But in the post-processing side, we can kind of bring it back to like what it looked like in real life. Of course, maybe that takes a little bit of the way of the fun of shooting in film, but made for the better portrait at the end of the day. And this next one is just an environmental portrait um, of Morgan and the Eden Park sign here in Cincinnati. If you're in the area, go visit it. It's pretty nice. So this next set was taken. So these were taken in winter. Obviously, it lends itself better to black and white. Um, and these were taken on the Big Four Bridge in Jeffersonville, Indiana. So found this super cool lock um, on one of the handrails. Just snapped a photo. This next set is the same 24 to 70 um, Tamron lens and then another one of the trussing and steel work. All right so these next two photos were taken during the University of Cincinnati's College Conservatory of Music production of Clybourne Park. At the time was working at the as the production assistant and was speaking to the director and he thought it would be really cool if we in conjunction to covering the production in digital, but also doing some film photography. So I shot this um, with the F5, with the Tamron 70-200 G1 version on Ilford HP5 400, and then that was pushed two stops. So I was actually shooting at a ISO of 1600. Overall, really cool, representative of the time that the production was based in. Um, and, you know, the director and the cast is super happy to have them. All right, cool. So moving forward, a few photos I took on Ektar 100 with the Nikon 35mm F2D lens at East Fork State Park. So here we are with close-up of the trail markings. So once again, pretty good detail there and sharpness as you'd expect. Here's one of the actual lake. This is switching over to XT400 again <laughs> and back to Ektar and then pretty much covers it. Um, there's a few more fun images here but encompasses like what the F5's good at um, which is everything of course for film photography. All right well hopefully you like this video and if you're interested in the F5 Take a look around your local camera stores um, or KH. Normally there's one or two floating around. And honestly, I think pairing the F5 with the uh, 50 millimeter 1.8 D or G variant is a perfect place to start. And of course, figuring out what the best way to develop that film that you shoot um, will be um, is going to be a factor. Whether your local camera shop does it or you might have to send it out um, can kind of be a factor as far as what the startup cost is for shooting film. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Have a good one.